All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And I've got another machine on the table today. I've been using it yesterday, uh, a little bit the day before, and doing a lot of testing with it today. And I'm going to lead off by saying this, guys. When I first opened the box and I looked at the machine, I was a little underwhelmed. Uh, it looked a little too simplistic. It didn't have limit switches. I was, I was a little disappointed at first. Uh, but through the testing that I've done with this machine, I will say that it has changed my mind about the, the way that it works and its capabilities. It is a little different than what I'm used to, so I had to kind of adapt the way that I run a laser slightly to be able to do the same stuff with this one that I do with other things. But now that I've got it all figured out, it's working really good. Now this machine is a 10 watt, so if you're looking for 20 watts, this is probably not gonna be in the, the range that you're looking for. And so the machine that I'm gonna be showing you today, guys, is, is made by Longer. Now, Longer makes 3D printers and some other stuff as well, uh, but this is the Longer Ray 5, and it's a 10 watt module. It's very similar, a lot of the same principles as other machines. There's a couple of things that this machine has that I really like, and there's a couple of things that I'm not crazy about. All right, guys, so the machine's fairly simplistic. Uh, it's a 400 by 400 work area. Uh, it's using the uh, 20 by 20 extrusion, but it has these neat little uh, corner brackets that go in here that utilize some grub screws to kind of sturdy up the connection points. Uh, once you get this thing together, it's really rigid, it's really solid. When I got it out of the box, guys, literally, th there was only a handful of parts, okay? <laughs> a handful of screws. The putting it together was probably one of the easiest I've ever done. Uh, the gantry comes already assembled. Uh, the wiring harness is simply comes out of the controller, goes over. There's a zip tie here. I got another zip tie here going to the stepper, and then it plugs into the to the laser. I mean, it's really, really simple. So if you're one of those folks that doesn't like putting machines together, this one's really easy to do. Uh, the direction book was actually, for, for what I'm used to, the directions were actually really thorough. Uh, the the pictures could have stood to have been a little a little clearer at some of the illustrations, but for the most part, uh, it was easy to follow just using the book that was in the box uh, without having to have access to the internet or anything. And uh, got it together really quick and had it burning. Because it doesn't have limit switches, a lot of times you may want to run this guy from uh, current position, which a lot of the stuff that I do, especially with smaller things that you have to precisely aim, sometimes it's quicker just to do it you know, from current position. Well, this machine actually on the on the display, you can you can move the machine around, no issues with the touch screen. Uh, you can actually put files on here and uh, set them to burn from the card. And so pretty much Wi-Fi connectivity. I haven't figured out how to make it operate through Lightburn through the Wi-Fi yet. The offline controller and been able to burn files from here, which is, is relatively easy. Uh, to do that. Now you're going to need to know how to export them to G code, save them to the card, and then you open them from here and burn those. Uh, we'll do a quick little demonstration on the back of my test piece here. So the way that it works is you'll have to move the laser to where you want to do the, the, the burn. And I'm going to move down here onto the workpiece. Give myself a little more room. All right. Once you get it to where you want it to, to, to burn, then you hit the zero set and it'll say positioning done. And you're gonna go back and you're gonna to go to engrave. Uh, they've got a bunch of different little logos on here. I've got my logo on here, which I messed up putting it into the laser garble and it's a little big for the machine. So once you select the, the file that you want, it has a framing button. You can frame. It's gonna show you exactly where it's gonna go and then you just hit the check mark after you know you agree to the settings. Uh, I have found that the settings that they put in here work really well. It says basswood, but it works really well on the Luan that I've been using and cedar and pretty much any of the other woods, uh, it works really well. Now, the one thing that I think this machine is really, it really shines at is guys, the focal point on it is, is it is very, very small. Uh, I know 10 watts, that's traditionally what they're known for, but this machine, I will tell you that it has an alignment tool on here that you use to uh, position it, that you can 
you can actually hit the button and it'll turn the light on so you can, you know, aim it. And uh, if you focus the machine just right, even at 3%, it'll mark this wood. I found that out the hard way. If you drop the focus down a little bit lower than what they recommend, it will actually bring that point, the focus to the point to where it will leave a hole in this wood, a little small, just a small mark. But the machine does not come with an air assist, uh, but it has the, uh, the cone that basically allows the air that's passing through the module to be brought to you know, a pretty decent little point and create a little bit of pressure uh, to kind of serve as an air assist. Now I did, of course, decide that I wanted to try it with an air assist. And so I used one of the aftermarket air assists that I have, uh, fixed it up to work with the machine. And it, it did make a difference. Uh, the biggest difference more so was the cleanliness of the cut, not as much the ability of it to cut deeper. Uh, I did get a couple more passes out of it at, at slower speed, higher speeds, but the, the biggest difference was of course the cleanliness of the cut. But I'll let that little guy finish. Uh, and then I got a, a, a lot of other uh, burns that I did just to kind of give you an idea of what the machine is capable of. And then I'm gonna give you a few tips that uh, I figured out with light burn to make the machine a little more user friendly for somebody like myself that's used to limit switches. All right, so that's the way, that's the way it operates off the offline controller, guys. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the machine off. And when you're using light burn, this is what I recommend, all right? Turn the machine off. You wanna pull the machine all the way to the left, all the way down. Once it's in this position, power the machine back up. That way when it connects to light burn, you're synced up with what light burn thinks the machine's supposed to be doing. All right, uh, let, me get the, let me get the screen around here where you guys can kind of see light burn as well. Uh, so what I have done to try to cheat a little bit, because I do, I do like operating my machines that have limit switches and whatnot, is I have went into, uh, up here, if you can see it on the screen, I have went into my saved positions and I've created one position, which is what I'm calling home. It's not actually home, it's actually the back left corner. And so as soon as I power the machine up with the module in the front left corner, I'll go ahead and I'll click on my little created location here, which is actually zero 400 and I'll tell it to go there. That's gonna send it to the back left corner. All right. So now I also have it set up to where after each engrave that I do, it's gonna return to that back left corner. So what I do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a little quick frame and, and do a little quick, just, just a line on this file. All right. So when I've got a file and I run it out there to do a burn, it'll do this burn and then it's going to go back to where it came from, which is technically serving as a home location. And as long as you are consistently doing the front left corner, sending it back, this thing is very, very uh, consistent with engraving. All right, guys, so I took a few minutes, and uh, if you notice here, what I did is I created a cut file, and I created it to fit this, this pen, this pencil, or pen right here, all right? And I've, once I created the cut, I cut that out of that jig panel right there and changed it over to a tool line, and I'm going to use that tool line to align my text so that I know exactly where the text is going on this pen. So I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna, I wanna like put the clack shack all over this pen right here, just to show you this machine is capable of doing consistent projects, which was a surprise to me too, uh, when I realized that it did not have limit switches. Uh, in order to make this, put this in the same spot every time, you have to make sure you position the pen in the same spot every time. Uh, that's why I use my jigs. Uh, I've got the text. If you'll notice, I've got the text centered in the uh, little tool line right here. That's my reference for where everything is. This is basically the map of where the pen sits. And then that allows me to be able to put the text where I want it. All right, so just to kind of demonstrate, uh, I'm gonna hit the frame button. If I don't trip, I'm gonna hit the frame button. Okay, so as you can see, there is some, uh, the little metal piece on the end of that pen. So I'm gonna have to slide my text back towards the clip just a little. Frame it again. All right, so now you can see I'm actually 
above that. So it's the, the, the clack shack name is going to reach from that little clip all the way down to right before the edge of that uh, metal. All right. Uh, because this is a bamboo pin, I'm going to go ahead and move my speed because this little thing, this machine, one thing I will say about it is through my testing, it engraves really hot. Okay, so you don't have to, you can run some really high speeds and get good engraves using it. So here we go. If I can hit the, <laughs> if I can hit the right button. When I turn to look at the machine, I like miss hit the wrong button. So once this completes, it should go to my designated position, which is going to be up in that top left corner. That gets it out of my way so that I can take that material out. All right. So there's the, there's the product of that engrave. Oh, uh, you can see the text is on there. Nice. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to flip it over to the opposite side and put the same text on there. And the way I built my little jig, it allows you to flip the, the, the metal piece without having to turn it on the pin. Uh, this also helps you to make sure if you're doing two sided engraves, that the two engraves are on opposite sides of each other because you flip that pin from that side to this side. Uh, that way you don't have to try to turn the, the clip. When I'm at events uh, and I've got my booth set up, I do a lot of these. And so I have really <laughs> got my use out of this type of, uh, of a jig. And I, guys, I can just keep setting this thing back down there. All right. This machine does have really good consistency. There's the, there's the second side. There's the first side. I was a little bit of a pessimist when I first opened the box for this machine, but after spending a little time with it, getting to know the way that it works, uh, I will say it's, it's very accurate and for engraving, it does a really, really good job. Now, 400 by 400 is not going to be a real big workspace, but if you're doing stuff like these little pins or you know small cutting boards, stuff like that, it's plenty. Uh, if you're just getting into lasering and you want a simple machine that's easy to operate, you don't have to work on. There's not a lot on this one that can go wrong, guys. I mean, you got steppers, you've got the module itself and the controller. Very few plugs, very, there's no limit switches, there's no, you know, tilt sensors, there's no flame switches, there's no flame sensors. It's very, very, very bare bones, but it does a really good job. You will have to adapt the way that you do things if you're used to limit switches and been able to send it home and all that because this one does not have a home feature built into it. But using my workaround, setting up the preset locations, putting the machine in the front left corner when you power it up, it works. Uh, it's a workaround to get away from not having that home position. So, but there's the pin, turned out really nice. Uh, like I said, this, this guy, the, the engraving speed on it, it would be a really good one for events and stuff like that. Uh, in my opinion, because you know, it engraves really fast, really accurately. And it's a simple machine, less stuff to tear up. So let's get to my thoughts after doing all the testing and guys, this is just one of my test boards that I've ran through this thing. Uh, <laughs> I'll go over this with you, but when I first got it, I did a, I started a test uh, engrave up here. Okay, I learned one thing about it. When you're using a USB hub on your table and you unplug a camera, it can cause the machine to disconnect from light burn. So that's what happened here, I believe. Uh, because I haven't had any more problems with it, but I had disconnected the camera I was using on another machine. And when I disconnected the camera, the machine stopped. So I'm pretty sure that was on me. But as you can see here, I did find out that this thing does not <laughs> does not need to be trying to engrave at 30 speed at 100 output it was way 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 too hot so i went back and i redid it and uh, changed some things up and rerun the, the power test uh 30 was still way hotter than it needed to be okay but look at the color uh, look at the variation the, the the gradient that you can get out of this machine uh, and this is all in millimeters per second millimeters per second so you can actually get you know, you get up in here, you can get you some grays, or you can go down here and get the blacks. Uh, the one problem that I did have with the machine and I really wanted to know was it doesn't have an air assist. And so I'm used to air assist. I wanted to know what an air assist would do. So over here, guys, uh, this on the left is, I used some parts that I had from, uh, you know, other, 
uh, machine and engineered myself an air assist. As you can see, I got a little bit better cutting out of it, but a lot less yellowing, but this was a 45 degree air assist. And so you do still have some yellowing. It wasn't one of the, through the nozzles. Uh, I didn't have a nozzle to fit it. So, but with air assist, without air assist. So an air assist for this machine would definitely be a, a, a nice upgrade. Uh, but these, these files here were ran from the, the SD card. Uh, just like I showed you earlier, these I run from the little board. I just moved the laser over, walked it, and then burned those there. Uh, like I said, still some yellowing, uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of yellowing there. But you can turn the power down and adjust the power and get away from the yellowing. Uh, the power; these are the power settings that were already in the machine. I didn't change those, uh, but I did find that I seem to like 300 millimeters a second at 100% on this material. Uh, it done a really good job. I did a few tests with it. This is an engrave test at 120 to 100% output. And then that's just some a line. Uh, it's the same file. I just did it as a fill and a line here. Uh, this is a one pass cut test and a two pass cut test without air assist or anything that I did initially starting out. But like I said, it's not going to be a really heavy hitter when it comes to cutting. It does cut and it cuts pretty well. Uh, for 10 watt, like I said, it's not bad. Uh, 10 watts in the past, anywhere from three to four passes to get through materials normally. Uh, so this one does it pretty pretty continually in two passes. You can get almost up to, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I probably wouldn't stay in the 10 millimeters per second range, but you know, you could, you could do it occasionally. But if it was something that I really didn't want to have to redo, I would probably still say around seven millimeters a second uh, and do two passes on, on this material here. Uh, but all in all, guys, it's a solid machine. It does pretty much everything any other machine will do. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. You're not going to be getting limit switches with it. But if you're looking to get into lasers, you want something reasonable, that can, you know, affordability is your thing, and you don't want to have to fool with all the switches and, you know, the alarms and false alarms, it might be something you're interested in. So, but for now, that's where I'm at on this machine. Not a bad machine. I was a little, like I said, I, I was a little judgmental when I first opened the box because I was like, this is way, you know, it doesn't have limit switches. It doesn't have this. It doesn't have that. But now that I've gotten to use the machine, I've kind of adapted the way that I operate. Uh, it's doing a really good job. So I hope this helps, guys. I hope it helps you make a decision. Like I said, if you're in a 10 watt uh, arena, it's not a bad machine. Just know the home button limit switches is not a thing, but there are ways to work around it. So. Uh, the jig kit that I've made, I will eventually end up with that in my Etsy shop. I had to make it to test this machine because that's one of the things that I do uh, in, in my business and my little side hustle is I use a lot of jigs. And so I didn't want to you know, sign off on this machine if there wasn't a way that you could use jigs with it to do repeatable projects. Uh, because I know a lot of you guys are doing that and people think we're crazy for it, but guys, you get four or five lasers working, uh, you can <laughs> you can turn a profit. So, and this one would be a good one to add to the arsenal, especially if you're really good at the G code programming. It has an offline controller, and you technically could just set your file up and send it without a computer. So, that's one benefit that the machine does have. So, until next time, guys. As always, be safe and have a good day.